Plus, we know now she's not running for re-election. Now the big question is, who will fill Dianne Feinstein's seat in the U.S. Senate? Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Cook. And I'm Ryan Yamamoto. Feinstein has served in the Senate for more than three decades, and several Democrats have already thrown their hats into the ring to replace her. One is Congressman Adam Schiff, who tweeted today, quote, Feinstein is one of the finest legislators we've ever known, and we are so grateful for her ongoing leadership. Another is Representative Katie Porter, who said Feinstein, quote, created a path for women in politics that I'm proud to follow. Both declared their candidacy weeks ago, and East Bay Congresswoman Barbara Lee is expected to join them. She said today she'll address those rumors soon. But first, she paid tribute, saying Feinstein's, quote, historic Senate career will be marked by her unwavering commitment to passing groundbreaking legislation. That statement from Barbara Lee didn't come from her, con her congressional office. It actually came from the Democratic media management firm that is already on board to handle her potential Senate run. And joining us live right now to talk about California's post-Feinstein political future is Dr. David McEwen. He is a political science professor at Sonoma State. Dr. McEwen, thanks so much for being here with us. Of those three presumptive candidates that we just spoke of, Schiff, Porter, and Lee, who do you think has the best odds? Look, if you uh, take a look at what we have for announced candidates so far, and, and maybe Ro Khanna gets in down from San Jose, perhaps not, maybe another Democratic player to be named later, you're going to have to raise a lot of money. And that means someone like Adam Schiff uh, probably has the early lead. He has the early lead because he has Nancy Pelosi's endorsement. If he were to get Senator Feinstein's endorsement, that would definitely catapult him to the lead. And I, after the primary uh, in early March in California, by the time we get to August, any candidate's going to have to spend 4 to $5 million a week. And that means it has the potential to be the most expensive Senate race in U.S. history. So that means Adam Schiff's 40% uh, of the congressional delegation of California. That's important. It means Katie Porter's got to raise a lot of money. And if Barbara Lee wants to compete, she's going to have to get a lot of money from progressives across the country to meet that kind of bar in the top two system. Also, if there's five or six candidates for Democrats, that provides an opening for a Republican to slide in there under California's top two, something to watch uh, as we move forward. And David, California hasn't elected a Republican senator since 1988. Are there any Republicans right now who get entered this race and have a realistic chance? Yeah, Ryan, I think that's a great question. Uh, for Republicans, there isn't uh, a name out there, but let, let's kind of set forth kind of a stereotype, if you will, or kind of an archetype. That archetype would be a, a Southern California Republican, perhaps someone from Hollywood, perhaps female, well-known, moderate in view. If Republicans can find that person, if they can build that person, uh, they would be able to be competitive. Democrats are going to have a cowbell about all Senate races across the country. California could be the most expensive, but what's going on in Arizona, Michigan, Pennsylvania, other states is really going to determine the balance of the Senate. What's at stake here is the balance of not only Dianne Feinstein's legacy, but that generational change that's going on. The Republicans want to be part of that, or they're going to be left out on the sidelines. A Republican has not been elected statewide in California since 2006, so it's been some time. That's a pretty mm. deep blue state there. All right, uh, Feinstein has said that she plans to serve out her current term, but do you foresee any pressure being put on her to step aside mm. sooner so Governor Newsom can appoint a replacement, perhaps one of the candidates we just talked about to kind of give them an edge? Yeah, I mean, if that were to happen, if, if uh, Senator Feinstein were to resign, Governor Newsom would be on his own shortlist of potential nominees to replace Dianne Feinstein. But he's also pledged that this would uh, likely be a, a, a person of color, a woman mm -hmm. who, who would be next in that seat. There's a short list of people Deserving there, but he has to look at it himself support. because there Jeez. isn't a way forward, if you will, in, in this sense. California's senior senator then becomes Alex Padilla, who's 49 and could be in that seat for a long time. So we have that generational change, and the short list could potentially give a boost. That is, again, the insider game that we want to pay attention to, because someone like Adam Schiff or Barbara Lee, if she were just going to serve out one term, uh, that could all be kind of going on behind the theater scene, if you will, uh, if you will for what potentially could happen. But look, nonetheless, if that were to happen, it also affects her legislative program. She's done a lot on assault weapons and on uh, other issues, particularly on China and foreign policy, then she doesn't want to be a lame duck. She doesn't want that to be her legacy in the last, say, 12 months or so. Yeah, a lot of questions still to answer. All right, so Dr. David McEwen from Sonoma State, thank you very much.